there. He never knows when we're airing, so we never know when we're airing. There are some things in sports that we want to talk to you about to get some uh, history, some perspective. But the news is breaking right now, before we talk about Bill Russell, that Deshaun Watson has gotten six games. And as skeptical <laughs> as I am in general of that industry and investigation – and as awful as this seems, because six games <laughs> seems awfully light for the scandal and shame of dry humping tables and <laughs> and just the awful that he has done uh, to women, six games seems amazing, does it not? Well, as we would say in Boston, pardon the laughter, right? I mean, seriously, the reason why... You knew this was coming yesterday. When you saw that released by the Players Association, essentially that was their way of saying... Boy, we got a great deal, and we're all going to abide by it. It was, in in some ways, it was a humble brag before the before the announcement. We got off, we got away, and I couldn't believe that statement because you would have never gotten that statement if he had gotten two years. You would have never gotten that statement if he had gotten anything close to what any of us would consider to be justice. And, and I think that there are two things about this that really need to be examined. And one is obviously, you know, how this went down. But the second is the structure of Deshaun Watson's contract. Because that contract was absolutely lo backloaded away from whatever suspension he was going to get. A million dollars for the first year is something absurd, right? Uh, something, something absurd. I mean, and this is, this is in some ways... A, this this is in some ways one of the most egregious things you're going to see in terms of the NFL and the players and in some ways even the Players Association in a lot of ways just saying we're untouchable. I mean, if you can't get me on this, you can't get me on anything. Let's talk about the mechanics of this. And I'd also like to talk about how women are supposed to feel when $1,500 or $1,500 of parlay bet by Calvin Ridley, the integrity of the league. Well, that's the troll. Exactly. And and it the league can make its argument about on-field product and integrity. And yes, uh, we would never say so publicly, but the integrity of our games does matter more than women. We can't frame it that way, but we just gave the punishments that would indicate it. But let's talk about the mechanics of the machine here instead of whether or not the penalty was stiff enough. You have an independent investigator with much, much time, more time invested in finding the facts around this than we are. You have a players association that must fight for its players because Roger Goodell has been heavy-handed of getting into this business where he gets to apply larger-than-the-law punishments because he's making it up as he goes along. The system just conspired to take some of that power away from Roger Goodell over the bodies of women. But the Players Association has to make the argument on behalf of Deshaun Watson, has to defend its client, does it not? And it should, absolutely. You have to do that. I mean, this is, it's their job to do that. And it's also the job of the independent arbiter to to make whatever conclusion she chose to. So we need more information on that when that verdict comes down when when that decision comes down we'll find out exactly what all that went into it and maybe at the end of the day it gets so muddy that this was the way to go and that this is how it works on its face however you do have to wonder the on the one hand there's no question this is in a very bizarre way a a long sought and overdue victory for the Players Association because of the way Roger Goodell could simply be the, the untouchable uh, judge, jury, and executioner, uh, the, the law and order commissioner, whatever other trope you want to come up with, because that's what he's been for the last 12 years. And so, you know, so there's that. But on the other hand, you do have to come up with, there's going to be at some point a question that they can't answer which is how do you how do you look people in the eyes and make sense of this to them unless something spectacular happens and you get a bunch of recantations or something which i don't see i'm wondering though howard because it begs the question it does like what does she know that we don't 
What does the arbiter, what information does she have? I think most reasonable people listening to this do not believe that that many women came forth because there's nothing here. And if Roethlisberger gets, you know, six games or whatever it was, eight games that he then negotiates down to a lower penalty, what am I to make of six games? Well, what you can make of it, well, I mean, it's not that different from Cosby, who went to jail and then suddenly wasn't in jail anymore. I mean, there's all kinds of different things you can make from it. One of the things you can absolutely make from it is the argument that his off-field and his on-field, the same Calvin Ridley argument, that the two are not connected, and that this went through, that he went through a legal process, and by making those settlements that the two are really not connected, that, okay, he, you tell us, whenever something goes down in the league, you say, we're going to let the law follow its course. Okay, so we're going to make a line here. We're going to separate the two. And in separating the two, he made his settlements. He, whatever machinations went through the legal process, that's done. And now what does this actually have to do with football? And maybe that's where she's coming from. I'm looking forward to finding out more, but absolutely, you're right. If you're, if you're going to make the argument... Essentially, it's a morals clause, right? If you're going no, to make and, the argument... And everyone is, everyone is incentivized here, Howard. Everyone. In the climate of the day, everyone is incentivized to overpunish here. For them to come off as a league after all of this talk, as light on this, what does the arbitrator know? She she's spent more time. She's an independent, and she has spent more time with this than all of the us. I mean, maybe I can assume most cynically. Oh, the league just wants in one of its quarterbacks on the on the field. Rich people negotiated for a long time to get to here, yeah. all of whom have a lot more information than we do on this because they're going through the details that aren't just the voices of the women that have Deshaun Watson's voice in them, which we have not heard very much of. What's known here? I'm. I can't say it's unfair until I know what it is that she's actually ruling on. What does she have that I don't know? Yeah, that's right. And what is she basing it on? Because maybe, once again, maybe what this is all being based on is that, okay, there is an on-field line and an off-field line. And, uh, and, and that maybe what's actually taking place right now is, is the curbing of Goodell's power to affect people's lives off of the field. This is what I'm asking you. I think this ruling affects Goodell's do it however he wants, velvet, like, or iron 100%. fist. This is a huge victory for the Players Association. But it's also a defeat for what Goodell rode to his salary of the present day, which is I will punish, the, I will over punish these criminals. My league will not be run by off-field malfeasance. Now they take it out of his hands. This takes the power out of Goodell's hands and puts it into Sean's? Well, it takes the power out of out of his hands and puts it into the, and, and and you know maybe it puts it in a place where, you know, Goodell's not going to be in this job that much longer anyway. Maybe what it does is it simply creates the new precedent that that anything that happens off the field that the league stays out of your business, what? and that you know do you have that that whole the NFL is a right not a privilege type of stuff, maybe they're punting. In a, and punting in a way that Major League Baseball is not because Trevor Bauer has not been on the field. We haven't seen him, and this is going in the second year now. What Third I think year. We're, we're forgetting, though, is that like in a lot of ways, the NFL's own reputation works against these women, even despite this new collectively bargained arbitrator agreement. Like, if you're a woman who's accused of Sean Watson of something, and, and like, say you've, you've, filed a civil lawsuit, you may not have been part of this investigation. You may not have wanted to come forward and cooperate with the, with the NFL for a number of reasons, because as Jenny Brent just reported last summer, uh, two of the women that were part of the NFL investigation felt that the line of questioning was victim blaming. So there might be a reason for you not to want to participate with the NFL in the first place. And there also might be a reason why, for one reason or another, Sue Robinson decided she didn't want to hear certain testimony from certain people. We don't exactly know who she did hear from 
and we can't assume that she knows more than we know. She might have actually considered less than what we've read in well, news reports that have that, been. That seems not. Does that seem possible? Yes, like, of course. Like, like this isn't a jury. It's not like I would assume she has all the information. No. Plus, no. I, I I think Florio reported last week that that wasn't the case. Like she she didn't hear from every single woman who filed a civil suit. They heard from a subset of those women, and and some women I think who may not have filed civil suits but were part of the criminal investigation. So we don't. We can't assume that she for somehow uncovered some some secret truth that like the public hasn't been let on to yet. I also think it's worth noting that from a Roger Goodell standpoint, his role to play in this is still to be determined because in the three days in the aftermath of the recommendation, either the player or the league can appeal. And that appeal is heard by Roger Goodell. So if the NFL decides to sit it out and not appeal, then one would presume that this is an era of, as you said, Howard, Roger Goodell saying, I don't want, I'm washing my hands of this suspensions thing and neutral arbiter handles it and we're going forward with it. But if they appeal and Roger Goodell hears it, then we're right back in the middle of they could potentially overpunish. It's been reported by Dan Graziano of ESPN that in negotiations, the NFL was asking for a 12 game suspension and an $8 million fine. So if the NFL decides to appeal, then maybe we get there. Howard, this is crazy because from Ian Rappaport under Watson's previous contract, he would have lost 11 and a half million from a six game suspension. Now it's 345,000 based on the new salary structure are we really seeing howard like if you had to guess we we're going to get more information as the day develops that roger goodell's entire reason for being the celebrity powerful commissioner that manfred followed because goodell gave him permission on you can over punish bigger than the law that quietly the the league lays down its sword on this one, as soon as it gets to women, they're like, they've had no problem overpunishing and defending the overpunishment. Goodell lost so much credibility on that bounty thing, as pretending like he didn't know what the Saints were. You're going to tell me that this is where this one dies? No, I'm going to say that. Well, I mean, you, you could make an argument that they overpunished on Ray Rice or underpunished on Ray Rice, but he never played in the league again. I think what you're really looking at here is a victory for the Players Association that nobody ever thought coming. You have to remember that the Players Association has been chipping away at Roger Goodell's power for a decade now. And they've been going after him and going after him through the court, through the court and through the court and through the court to make sure that he couldn't be omnipotent the way he was early in his tenure. And so what you may end up seeing here is the NFL in some ways abdicating that roll that piece of their responsibility now obviously if something goes wild if you have something else i get your point you know your point is well what could be more wild than this what can it what could happen out there that doesn't deserve the sort of attention that we're getting here and actually the guy that i go back to on this dan is kaepernick because the argument that the players association was making on kaepernick was what he's doing is not actually taking place on the field therefore you cannot punish him if you're using that as a baseline, then all this off-field stuff that the players are going through, as long as it doesn't really affect their job, you're going to get more and more nominal suspensions. And now you can make an argument that that, is, that, that runs counter to where, what we've seen over the past 12 years, where Goodell is simply the guy who lays down the law and then you get punished. Or you can say, hey, it's about time that his power is finally being eroded. I just think it's super interesting symbolically that you go from laying down the law to laying down your sword when he never should have been in this business. He did it for image reasons and everyone profited off of it, even though he was ill-equipped and it was wrong for him to be thinking that he could manage domestic abuse related things better than the law could when the law isn't very good at it either. Well, and that the league itself was going to be the arbiter of you know, of, of moral conduct. It was like, why are we looking at Roger Goodell for this stuff? And so there's no, there's no doubt that this is a huge loss for, I mean, it certainly doesn't incentivize anyone to talk. Look at what's happening with the Washington football team commanders right now. I mean, the message being sent across the board is if you're a woman, do not get involved with the National Football League. Howard Watson wins. 
Like every, he wins. Everyone else loses here. I understand. It's weird to say, right? Because Players Association didn't lose. They won because they finally beat Roger Goodell on something that is a pretty titanic victory for them in terms of expecting that your guy was going to get a year and everybody gearing up that he was not even going to be on the field. He'll be on the field before Thanksgiving. They game the system, though. It's one division game that he's missing. They, they, The lawyers and everyone who got involved, it's weird to say, right, because Watson does get the shame to his name, and this will cost Watson because those attorneys are expensive. But good God, did they earn it. They, they manipulated the whole thing. Howard, I can't, yeah. I I cannot believe so much so that I'm asking where's the more where's more information. I can't believe that after all of that, it's not just six games, but it's where you see Roger Goodell's iron fist come undone. Yeah, and where you're also and and where you're also going to see the collusion between the players and the Browns. The Browns need him on the field as well. I mean, so I mean, all of this is dirty. I mean, there's let's I mean, let's just put that where put that out front.